Hi, this is Stacy with Lily Bean Crafts by Stacy. Welcome back. And if it's your first time, thanks for stopping by. So I was recently at a Michael's that's close to my house and I noticed the theme of red and white for this year. So I took this picture and decided to base a tumbler off of the theme of the red and white. So I'm starting off with a 24 ounce travel tumbler that I got from the Tipsy Magnolia. I went ahead and I clean sanded it, prepped it, and spray painted it with my Color Shot spray paint. This color is Stiletto. I let that dry for about a half an hour and now I'm going in with my glitter glue. I'm gonna give it a nice good coat. Um, getting the handle too because I'm gonna be um, putting the glitter on that as well. Getting everything really well except for the very bottom because I will be doing a glitter butt. And the red that I am using is from Chase Ray Creations. It's called Phoenix and I love the cut of it. The way that it shows, it just has such a wonderful sparkle to it. So I decided that I was just going to go with one color glitter for the entire tumbler. Once I have it completely coated, I'm going to go ahead and put it off to the side and let it dry for four hours. And then I'm going to go in with another coat of my glitter glue. I just want to make sure that I get it all sealed in. Red is just one of those colors that just seems to want to get on everything so i want to make sure that i have this sealed really good once i have it sealed i'm going to let that sit for another four hours and then i'm going to go ahead and get started on my first coat of epoxy and if you haven't done so yet come check out my lily bean crafters community facebook group i am currently working on putting together a 12 days of christmas video series and i would love your input on some things that you would like to see me make Going to start off with putting on 30 mls of my Flynn Sisters Fast Set Epoxy. Want to make sure this I get this covered really well. It is um, the glitter is like a 0.15 cut, so it's definitely not a chunky, but it does want to absorb the epoxy. So I want to make sure I get a good coat on here, and I also want to make sure that I get it really good around the handle. I always seem to struggle in that area. And I want to make sure that I get this good so I don't have to do a bunch of coats of epoxy. So once I have this all on, I'm going to go ahead and let it sit for three hours. And then I'm immediately going to go in with another 15 mLs of my facet epoxy. Do the same thing, get a nice um, thin coverage on there and let that spin for four hours. And then it will be time to start the vinyl work. And either last year or the year before, I got these two vinyl pieces from Banff Custom Creations. I just really haven't had a thought on what I wanted to do with them. And now that I wanted to go with the red and the white theme, I went looking through materials I already had before I bought more. And these just seem to go really well together. So I'm starting off by cutting the plaid so that it fits in the middle band around the inside handle of the cup. And I'm just going to go ahead and measure that off and I'm going to use the hinge method to apply it. What's wonderful about plaids is it's generally pretty easy to match it up so you can't even see the seam that's on there. I decided to do another plaid band on the bottom portion of the tumbler and this is where it gets tricky because the bottom piece is tapered. So it's really, really hard to lay a piece of vinyl 
and fit it straight on here. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I made this work because I couldn't just do the hinge method all the way around and apply it because it would just go wonky because of the taper. So I'm gonna put it on until it, until it wants to start going off in a different direction and then I'm just gonna trim it off with my X-Acto knife. And then now I'm just gonna go and start piecing it by small pieces at a time. Once again, with it being a plaid, it's really easy to cut it and match it up. And in order to get it to work properly, I was doing, I was applying it kind of on an angle. So at the top of it, it would match up perfectly. And then as it went down, it kind of cut into the other piece of vinyl and then I would take my X-Acto knife and I would trim it. And that is what I had to do to get this so that it would fit and just look seamlessly around the tumbler. Farther around the tumbler I got, the smaller the piece of vinyl that I would cut to trim to make sure that it all matched seamlessly. last piece was the most important piece because I had to make it look seamless on both sides of it so it did take me a few minutes just to get this last little piece on it seems like such a small piece but it's so important and at this point in time I wasn't sure if I was going to be doing a white piece of trim around it or not I was kind of leaning towards just letting it be on its own and so I wanted to make sure that I was able to line this up from side to side and from top to bottom and make it look seamless. The red glitter is I'm going to go in with the other vinyl sheet that I have. And this is a semi-transparent with all different um, patterns on it. It's got snowflakes, Christmas trees, little starbursts, gingerbread men, and the words Merry Christmas in a really pretty script. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut these out and just place them wherever I want them to be. It got a little bit tricky right here because of that curve. So I had to do a little bit of extra trim work with my X-Acto knife, but you know, it's one of those things that's expected when you're working on a curve. It's all worth it in the end, but it does take a couple of extra minutes. And I'm just gonna kind of speed through here and kind of show you where I placed everything and got it all set to get ready for the next coat of epoxy.
and now I'm going in with another 15 mLs of my fast set epoxy. And I did not need to seal any of this vinyl. Um, it's a removable vinyl and it just is great the way it is. So I was able to go right in from applying it to putting it on epoxy with no extra steps. I let this spin for four hours and then moved on to the next step. Because of the way that I decided to do the semi-transparent um, elements that were on there, having them kind of butt up against the plaid, I decided to go ahead and put four little vinyl strips on here and make it look complete. And this just took a few minutes because this is something that I do all the time. And once this is all applied, I'm going to go ahead and get another coat of epoxy on there. And now I'm going in with another 15 mLs of my fast set epoxy. Make sure I get this fully coated. This is going to be the last set of fast set that I'm going to use. And I'm going to let this dry for four hours. And then I'm going to start working on the glitter butt. And I'm going to go with my UV resin and start working on the glitter butt. I didn't do a lot of filming on this because I've done a lot of glitter butts before. But I'm starting off with Peppermint from Chase Ray Creations. And... I'm going to take that and put my UV resin in there and I'm going to put it around the outer rim. What I'm doing differently this time is normally I will dry the outer rim with my UV resin dryer and instead I decided to keep it wet and then I'm going to go ahead and get that all around and then I'm going to go in with the Phoenix again for the center with my UV resin and I'm going to fill that in all the way. And something that I just saw Vanessa Davis do that I thought was so unique was she takes the two different glitter mixes and she kind of swirls them and then dries them together. And I thought that would look so fascinating with these colors and it totally worked. Once I had it mixed the way that I liked it, I went ahead and I dried it and then I took a snowflake element from the sheet that I used and I put that in the middle. And then I took one more small thin coat of the UV resin and dried the whole bottom, sanded the entire cup, put 15 mLs of my regular medium viscosity um, Flynn Sisters epoxy and let it spin for eight to 10 hours and then it was done. And here it is. I am officially ready for Christmas. It is taking everything in me not to put up my Christmas decorations this early, but I love how this turned out. I love the red and the white theme and look at that glitter bot. It's so pretty. And if you like this tutorial, please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.